Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. October 3rd, 2017. He was a sick man, a demented man, a lot of problems, I guess, and uh, we're looking into him very, very seriously, but we're dealing with a very, very sick individual. 106 here on the great WRKO. Okay, that was President Trump's latest comments on the Las Vegas shooter, uh, Stephen Paddock, the man allegedly behind the Mandalay Massacre. He is meeting with hurricane victims in Puerto Rico. And so let's just roll it again, Brittany. Basically now, I guess what the FBI is telling him and law enforcement is that he wasn't right in the head. Roll it, Brittany. He was a sick man, a demented man, a lot of problems, I guess, and uh, we're looking into him very, very seriously, but we're dealing with a very, very sick individual. You know, I mean, look, look, sick, if you mean it in the sense that he's evil and depraved, yes, uh, who would do something like this except an incredibly diabolical, evil human being? But if you mean sick as in mentally ill, so far, where's the evidence? I mean, there's there's no criminal background, and there's no background in any way, shape, or form that he had a psychiatric problem, a psychological problem, a mental health issue. None. None. Literally none. 617-266-6868. What do you think was his motive? What was the motivation for the massacre of 59 people dead, confirmed, over 500 injured in the deadliest mass shooting in American history. Okay, before I go back to the blazing phone lines, one of the victims was one of our own. She was a mom from Tewksbury. She was 42 years of age. Her name was Rhonda LaRocque. Apparently, the family is utterly devastated. They say they are heartbroken, completely stunned by what took place. Uh, Rhonda LaRocque's mother said that she was a beautiful person on the inside and on, on the outside. According to her sister, who is completely overwhelmed by the loss of Rhonda LaRocque, quote, she was a good mom, a good wife, and a good sister, according to Jessica Zelineski. Even if she worked all day long, she still came home and made home-cooked meals. So everybody's saying she was, by the way, she worked for a firm in Cambridge. Uh, her employees said that she was extremely devoted, very hardworking, loved her family, uh, was very nice to work with, was a great colleague. They apparently went on a vacation to Vegas. She was at the concert with her husband, their young daughter, and the father-in-law. I guess it was getting a little bit late for the little bambino, for the young daughter. So the father-in-law and the child left, thank the Lord, before the gunfire. However, her husband was standing right beside her when she was hit by one of the bullets. And so the sister says this, quote, This person went out and killed so many people that he didn't know for no reason. It just doesn't make sense. If you have psychological problems, get help. If you have problems with someone, don't take it out on everybody because this is what happens. And this is a point that I have been stressing my entire life. Victims of crime are not just those that are murdered or raped or, of course, they're the biggest victims. But it also damages and cripples the family. When this poor mother was gunned down and killed, Rhonda LaRocque, her husband will never be the same again. Her daughter will never be the same again. Her sister will never be the same again. Her parents will never be the same again. That's the true nature of crime. It's not just the person they hurt. It's the entire circle around the victim. 617-266-6868 is the number. Okay, let's go to um, Deb in Quincy. Go ahead, Deb. Hi, Jeff. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm um, okay. Um, I just have a few things. Um, th yeah, the, um, the news said tens of thousands of dollars was um, in Philippi the Philippines when that woman um, 
was there. It's a hundred thousand dollars in an account that um, she's floating around with down, down in um, Philippines. And this reminds me of the um, Sanaev shooting when the Saudi Arabian was in the hospital um, and Michelle visited him right after that, and all of a sudden he was gone and never to be heard from again. Um, they haven't, um, you know, they like you said, they could be um, investigating her very you know, very closely, um, going to get her. Um, and, um, there's no, there's no answer for that right now. And, um, I don't think we'll ever learn the story about this because, um, the SWAT team that went into that hotel, um, and shot, well, however that man died, um, this reminds me, and I don't, I'm going out on a limb here, but um, Lee Harvey Oswald, when Jack Ruby shot him, like you said, the dead men tells no tales. And um, now, um, and then the second window, everybody's talking about, there were so many different caliber guns in that um, hotel room, um, and the Carmen is, last night was saying that they're going to go around hunting down every single bullet. We're never going to know. There's never going to be um, an answer to this. That's how I feel. Uh, Deb, thank you for that call. Well, look, I don't want to go back to the... I want to stay on this, but just very quickly, on the Kennedy assassination. Wasn't that awfully convenient that the guy who allegedly was the sniper, the assassin, Lee Harvey Oswald, we could find out why he did it, who put him up to it, you know, er, er, you know, the motives behind it, all of a sudden just conveniently gets killed by Jack Ruby? Notice, every time we have one of these... High-level assassinations. There's always some can somebody dies. It's just off. It's just awfully convenient. Just out of the blue, Jack Ruby. Just out of the blue, bang, offs him. Now, as for the Tsarnaevs, look, I don't want to get sidetracked. We have not been told the truth. I mean, this is just a fact. We have not been told the truth. No one has told us how they got their money. I know they were on welfare, but still, going back and forth to Chechnya spending six months in Chechnya, going to an Al-Qaeda terrorist training camp, that's not cheap, my friends. So I think clearly they were helped. I think there was a terrorist cell. Saudi Arabia has been funding radical mosques and cells all across Europe, all across North America. The connections to the, connections to the Cambridge Mosque, the connections to these radicalized mosques, all of this was swept under the rug. It happened. Let's just move on. Just move on. We got the two of them and move. Just move. And that's exactly how this smells to me. Okay, we got him. He's dead. Uh, we've raided the homes. That's another thing. So according now to everybody who worked with him, his friends, his family members, I mean, they can't all be lying. You know, people at Lockheed Martin, they can't all be lying. His friends, his neighbors who knew him, they can't all be lying. You may say the brother is trying to, but, you know, the brother, the mother, I mean, is ev the nephews, is everybody lying about this guy? Here's what they all say. He wasn't a gun guy. They go, look, he was a bit standoffish. You know, wasn't Mr. Personality or anything. But, you know, he wasn't crazy. He wasn't bipolar. He wasn't, you know, a militant guy. He didn't look like he had serious mental issues. Competent, made a lot of money, was a multimillionaire. And... He wasn't this big gun guy. He had a few guns, yes and yes, but, you know, he wasn't... He's not a guy that would have over 40 rifles, an arsenal, with uh, AK-47s, automatic guns, thousands of rounds of ammunition, and literally pounds and pounds of explosives. What? In fact, what everybody says about him is the exact opposite. He loved to gamble. He was. Uh, he loved video poker. The guy was always on a freaking cruise, or he was traveling to one of his properties. He had private planes, so he was what they call a bon vivant. You know, he liked to live life and enjoy life, and uh, he was a party guy. Made his money. God bless him. Retired. He was a party guy. You know, he wasn't some avid hunter. He wasn't one of these. Forgive me the term prepper. You know, he wasn't some guy that's out there, you know, waiting for a civil war, a white militia type guy, you know, who's just firing off weapons left, right, and center. So now you expect me to believe a multimillionaire with planes, cruising, homes, uh, likes to gamble, likes to eat burritos at Taco Bell, 
uh, I mean, just think of the profile. And all of a sudden, he's been turned into Rambo. 64 years of age. You see videos of him at the security video four or five years ago. The guy can barely make it up a flight of stairs. He's tripping. I swear to you, he's tripping over stairs from security video four, five, six years ago. But suddenly now, he just snapped. He snapped and he turned into Arnold Schwarzenegger. Another thing that some local officers and veterans are complaining about, and look, I love the first responders, the heroism of the police, incredible. But one of the complaints is that the SWAT team was slow. It's not me saying that. It's local police officers, the vets who were there. They're coming out and saying, you know, it was the response. He was on the 32nd floor. Apparently, they say from the smoke of the gun, you know, put on a tripod with the scope. Right, the smoke triggered the alarm. So they knew he was on the 32nd floor. I know it takes time to amass the SWAT team, but they're saying when the SWAT team arrived, they thought their reaction then when they tried to storm the room was a bit slow. They thought it didn't have the, the urgency that they thought it should have had. Listen now to the moments when the SWAT team blew open the hotel door room. Roll it, Brittany. On the suspect's door. I need everybody in that hallway to be aware of it and get back. We need to pop this and see if we get any type of response from this guy to see if he's in here or if he's actually moved out somewhere else. Copy. All units on the 32nd floor. SWAT has explosive breach. Everyone in the hallway needs to move back. All units move back. Breach, breach, breach. And that's when they blew the doors open, and that's when they say they found him dead from a self-inflicted gun wound. Pictures have now come out. I mean, there's 23. You can see it. There's 23 rifles, several handguns, uh, just ammunition everywhere. I mean, this guy was ready to fight his own private war. At rounds of ammo everywhere. Two tripods with scopes uh, perched on the two blown-out windows. And he ran from one to the other, one to the other, one to the other, just mowing people down. 617 266 6868, Lee in Waltham. Go ahead, Lee. Yes, uh, thanks for taking my call. I, I want to go through this, which you mentioned too. Lee Harvey Oswald, an obscure guy. Nobody knew anything about him. He had a rifle that was Russian made, which considered to be inaccurate, not very good rifle for, for sniping. They also found another rifle on the grassy knoll. But let that go. Nobody ever wanted to talk about that. And like you said, he conveniently died. RFK was killed by another obscure people, Sirhan Sirhan, who managed to get a gun, who didn't know his way around anywhere, but yet he killed JF, uh, Robert Kennedy. Then we had John Hinckley, and John Hinckley had emotional problems, but his brother was also part of the George Bush, George H. Bush uh, fund, you know, group that was hanging around, and John Hinckley shoots uh, Ronald Reagan, and he managed to survive Ronald Reagan, and you notice that once he did survive. He never went after the CFR like he said he was going to in his election uh, campaign. Now we come across Stephen Haddock. Here's a guy, like you just said and you've been describing, there's too many coincidences. I do believe because of Trump's investigation with Mueller and Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama and the um, uh, FBI and also the judicial system and the judges that were using the FBI, uh, we know that they also were using um, the FBI to um, infiltrate for the um, Tea Party, okay, and the income tax on the IRS. All of this is too convenient. Okay, and what this will do would set back Donald Trump's agenda because Donald Trump, Trump now has to deal with all of this stuff that's going on. And I really fear they're not going to go after him because they know that if anything were to happen to him, the country would be in an uproar. So they have to do it to weaken his plans. They've got to do it so that they come in the back door and all the things that he's doing with the FBI, the IRS, Hillary Clinton, it's all going to be watered down. And this is just a distraction. And this poor guy, okay, Stephen Paddock, was a victim, what I would consider, of the deep state, which is Wall Street, taking care, okay, of business as usual. What do you think? Lee, I don't know. I mean, and thank you for that call. Look, I, I don't know. 
What I'm just telling you is this. I am blowing holes in the official story because it doesn't add up. I'm just I'm tell, I'm reading and reading and reading. I'm like, no, that just doesn't doesn't make sense. None of what they're telling me makes sense. So if there's a cover up of what? That's the key. What are they trying to hide? We don't know. But to me, what I think is clear is that the media narrative is false. And what they're trying to sell us is false. Because none of this makes sense. And what's even more shocking is, I'm not kidding, you literally have politicians on, this is almost never done. Trey Gowdy, but there's many others saying, it just doesn't make sense. Trey Gowdy, it doesn't, nothing, doesn't make sense. Henry Cuellar, a Democrat from Texas, it doesn't make sense. What we're being told does not make sense. So when you have politicians on Capitol Hill, for God's sakes, openly, you know, musing, that this thing just stinks. It stinks. It obviously stinks. 617-266-6868. More with your calls. Next. 127 here on the great WRKO. Let me ask you this. I'm speculating, which you normally shouldn't do, but we don't have a motive. Now, there is a very ser- you know, very possible, very credible motive. What if, like the shooter that uh, uh, shot Steve Scalise and the Republican congressman at that baseball diamond in Northern Virginia, this 64-year-old you know, investor and multimillionaire and gambler was an anti-Trump leftist? They're, on social media, it's everywhere that they found Antifa literature in one of his homes. Okay? But that doesn't say, that's still not conclusive. You could have literature for all kinds of reasons. Okay? But just for the sake of argument, what if he was an anti-Trump leftist? What would be the consequences that he deliberately targeted the so-called deplorables? Trump supporting, generally, Trump supporting conservative, white, patriotic concert goers in Las Vegas. Continuing the violence of Antifa and the radical political left, like that Bernie Sanders supporter uh, that shot and gun, you know, shot up the, that baseball field, that baseball diamond in Northern Virginia. What do you think do you think the reaction in the country would be? I'm just thinking now of the political cultural, social implications. If this came out, if this was in fact the motive. And so if you're an establishment hack, if you're a Hillary supporter, if you're a liberal, if you're a Democrat, you would want to suppress this. And it's not even just for the obvious nefarious political reasons. There's also a, a, another reason which is your fear is, you know, this may start a civil war. I mean, I, I don't want to get carried away. It may lead eventually down the road to civil war. If you got the left now openly murdering, you know, in an act of terrorism, slaughtering so-called conservatives, the deplorables at country music stations, sorry, country music concerts, on top of them targeting Republican members of Congress, and this is coming from the radical progressive left, your fear is, what is the other side going to react to? What's going to be their reaction? And so I'm just throwing it out there because I remember a very close journalist friend of mine. In fact, he was an editor, one of the best in Washington. Uh, he was my publisher at Insight. He was spent almost four decades in Washington. And what he told me was the American people were lied to about the John F. Kennedy ass- assassination. This was a government cover-up of what took place in the killing and the murder of John F. Kennedy. And sometimes the deep state will do things for what they believe is in their institutional or they think the national self-interest, and then they will cover it up. And I remember, because he's a very serious guy, he's incredibly, he's, he's, he's credible, uh, he's one of the most respected journalists and editors in Washington with a lifetime of experience. And I remember my skin began to crawl when he told me that. So he said, remember, if the American government needs to, 
They will even cover up murder. I don't know what the reason is. Hopefully we'll eventually find out. But what I can tell you is this. What we're being sold is a false bill of goods. This narrative that he snapped, no way. And pigs fly. Let's take it to Evan in the newsroom for the latest update. Okay, as Eric Heidrich just reported in the newsroom, it is now breaking. Uh, law enforcement sources are now confirming that apparently the Las Vegas shooter, Stephen Paddock, wired $100,000 to an account in his live-in girlfriend's home country of the Philippines. So apparently she was uh, out of the country. He then, She then, forgive me, Mary Lou Danley traveled to Hong Kong on September 25, she was in the Philippines on October 1st when Paddock unleashed his rampage. And the money was apparently sent to an account in the Philippines. They're still trying to find out if the money was directed towards her or her family or some other purpose. She is apparently scheduled to come back tomorrow. She's now in Tokyo, and she's going to be flying back to the United States, where they plan to interrogate her much, much more closely. So, another piece of the puzzle. So, basically, a week before he does this heinous atrocity, he wires his girlfriend, a hundred or at least it seems, he wires his girlfriend a $100,000. For a guy who had high gambling debts, $100,000, no problem. He wires that overseas. Is this guilt money? Is this he knows he's going to die or he plans to die and he wants to set her up? She, and she doesn't find it strange that he's just sent her $100,000? Like, what, he sends you $100,000 every time you go to visit your family in the Philippines? There's a lot more questions than answers right now. 617-266-6868. Lines are loaded. Humberto in New Jersey. Thanks for holding and welcome. Hello. Hi, Humberto. You're on the air. Go ahead. Hi. How you doing, Cooler? Good, good, I good. To, uh, I wanted to tell you uh, thank you uh, because I, I was a uh, uh, Democrat all my life and then got Donald Trump doing Great job, yeah, baby. Uh, this time, I believe the government did it. I believe in my heart. But hopefully not. But I believe this time, the government did pay this guy to do this. Uh, Umberto, we had a problem with your phone. I couldn't understand what you were saying. But um, I, if your point is that I, the government is maybe deceiving us or manipulating us, I agree with you. Something, look, this, this does not pass the smell test. Jerry, you're up next. Go ahead, Jerry. Comrade. Comrade, how you are, my friend? I am well. Comrade, <laughs> two points I want to make before I, I, I mention something. On the 32nd floor, if you blow out a glass window, isn't, gonna, isn't there going to be a blowback in, in, in an air vacuum? I would assume so. It's high up. That's what I would think, too, from a physics standpoint. The second thing is, doesn't Abu Sayyaf and operate in the Indonesia and the Philippines? Yes, that's a, the Muslim, for everybody out there, that's a Muslim terrorist organization. In Don't fact, in the southern it, Philippines, Jerry, they got a huge Muslim insurgency. I know. Uh, Jeff, the company coming out and making statements yesterday, both you and I found that odd. Mary Lou Danley's. A uh, estranged husband, Gary Danley, from Fayetteville, Arkansas. He lives in Nevada. On his Facebook page, thank you, Obama, anti-Trump army, progressive day. All, the list goes on and on. He's a registered Republican in Washoe County, uh, Nevada. But lastly, Jeff. Hold on, Jerry. Registered Republican or registered uh, Democrat? Democrat. I'm sorry. Okay, go ahead. My brain's racing. That's okay. Jeff, they've shown their hand here. They painted a psychological picture of the the pictured life of Stephen Paddock, seemingly normal, under the radar, successful. All of a sudden, he snaps, gets hundreds of weapons, w w seemingly, thousands of rounds of ammunition, 
They're finding weapons in every one of his properties. Goes berserk, starts killing people. Well, you know what, Jeff? If, if that can happen to someone that's normal and affluent like him, it can happen to any of us. This stinks of a gun grab all over it. Interesting. Interesting. Thank you for that call, Jerry. Keith in Newburyport. Go ahead, Keith. I want to ask two questions that the media dare not ask. Number one, how did the FBI know within a couple of hours that this was not a terrorist attack when the investigation was just starting? Okay, number two, how come the media does not seek out the neighbors and ask him what was his political affiliation? They dare not ask these questions. Uh, Keith, excellent, excellent. Uh, to me, the first one I found very strange. First of all, I found it incredibly strange how within hours, I mean, literally, they're still pulling the bodies and driving them to the ad, to the hospitals, and they already ruled out ISIS, even though ISIS had claimed responsibility. I'm like, that's, that's awfully fast. Like, awfully fast. Awfully fast. That's point number one. Point number two, I can just tell you from what I've read. The neighbors that knew him in Reno, Nevada, the neighbors that knew him in Mesquite, Nevada, the neighbors that knew him when he had a big home in Florida, what they all paint is this picture, that he liked to gamble, that he had a lot of money, that he and the girlfriend would be up till about midnight, they would sleep in late, um, that he was a modest dresser, that they loved to go out cruising, that in other words, and they all say, guns, last thing. Last thing about this guy was that he was into guns, he knew about guns, he cared about guns. So they paint the picture of, frankly, a retired real estate investor, a multimillionaire, who now has no children, no grandchildren, a lot of disposable income, and he liked to go cruising, he liked to have a bit of drinks, a couple of drinks, and he liked to gamble. No one, that's the thing, no neighbor has said, oh, he was really strange. Oh, no. See, when it came to Adam Lanza, okay, with the uh, the Sandy Hook, everybody right away, the father came out and said, oh, I was estranged from my wife. She kept coddling him. I said he needed mental help. She wasn't going to give him the help that he needed. When it came to the Virginia Tech shooter, when it came to Aurora, Colorado, the mental illness angle was there right away, right away. You know, family members, friends, whatever. They go, no, look, he was strange, and we knew he was mentally, you know, not well. With him, it's literally the flip-flop exact opposite. The flip exact opposite. Everybody who worked with him, no. I mean, he's an accountant, so he's not the most gregarious guy in the world, but they go, hard worker, made his money, good accountant, was into property management, knew how to invest money, was wealthy, did well, he and his brother teamed up and had a business. They sold the business. Uh, he would gamble a lot. They all knew him. Madeleine Bay, they all knew him. He was a high-stakes guy. Video poker, 125 bucks a bet. He liked uh, the, the high life. So you're trying to tell me that a multimillionaire who has private planes with four or five homes who would spend sometimes months at the suites in the hotels gambling who no, showed no sign of violence, no sign of being unhinged or deranged, who, as I said, on the security cameras, is, you know, he's overweight, the guy's it's fine, but he's eating, he's enjoying life, he's cruising, can barely make it up a flight of stairs. And you want me to believe that four days before October 1st, he just decided, poof, I'm going to kill people at a country music concert. His wife goes overseas, sorry, his girlfriend goes overseas, wires her $100,000. They found at least 41 rifles, uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of rounds of ammunition, AK-47s, AR-15s that he converted to automatic rifles. How we learned that? Again, he's not ex-military, he's not special forces, nothing. With thousands of pounds of explosives. In his car and in his house. But he just snapped. Just snapped. The gambling debts. He just snapped. Now, how stupid do you think we are? Eric in New Hampshire. Go ahead, Eric. 
Yes, good afternoon, Jeff. Hi, Eric. I, I totally agree with you on, on this whole thing. It, nothing's adding up. It doesn't make any sense. And as I stated yesterday, I believe this is a conspiracy theory, that, that uh, or a conspiracy, and to support that theory, it, it's the supposed shooter, Steve, seems to me like he's a patsy. And I think that we, the only way he can be vindicated is through the autopsy report. In an act of what a, a, a shooting or a murder is involved, the part of the autopsy is they're going to search out gun residue on the on the uh, on the body of, of the suspect. You know, there's, there's going to be gunpowder residue. There's metal filings. Uh, the gases from the the automatic weapons that were used will be all over his skin and his hair. There will be evidence on that body if he was the actual shooter. I agree with you. Eric, I agree with you. Look, the autopsy, and not just of the shooter, Stephen Paddock, but the victims. Because think about it. If there were more than one shooter, and I say there were mul just for the sake of argument, there are multiple shooters. Well, think about it. There's going to be different caliber uh, bullets. So when they start taking bullets out from these the, the poor victims, they're going to find out, was there one shooter, two shooters, three shooters? In other words... The investigation may just be beginning. We're, I'm telling you, my friends, there's a lot more that needs to be answered. Uh, let's go to Roberta. She's up next. Go ahead, Roberta. Hello, Roberta. Okay, uh, I think we lost Roberta. Let's go to uh, Tom in Hampton. Go ahead, Tom. Hi, Tom. I mean, hi, Jeff. Sorry hi, Tom. That. You're on the air. Go ahead. Yes, hi. Hi. Um, I, I really believe something stinks to high heaven here, and how do we know he actually was the shooter? There was an awful long lag time, but by the time the uh, uh, SWAT team got up there, that's one thing. Another thing, uh, motivation. Who stands the most to gain by this? I say it's the left wing uh, uh, part of the government because they want gun control, and that's how I feel about it. Well, Tom, look, this is the thing that I find stunning. Now, maybe I'm just naive at heart, and thank you for that call. Within hours, I mean, I'm not kidding. They're still pulling the bodies out from the concert venue. And Hillary Clinton is weighing in right away saying, you know, uh, sniper, uh, sorry, silencers. We got to, you know, don't, pa don't have silencers for uh, these semi-automatic weapons, AR-15s. Uh, right away, we got to stand up to the NRA. Elizabeth Warren, gun control now. Nancy Pelosi, gun control now. The media, CNN, MSNBC, everybody, gun control now. And they haven't stopped. They literally haven't stopped. In fact, don't take my word for it. Seth Moulton, who for some reason, the Boston Globe, I swear to you, thinks that this guy could be a presidential candidate in 2020, has come out and now uh, what he did was he refused to stand and take part in the moment of silence for the victims. Because he said it's pointless. If you're not going to pass gun control, why are we even respecting the dead? That's how shameless and insulting his behavior is. And the Boston Globe today, read the piece by Kevin Cullen. It's, it's unbelievable. He was right. He's taking a knee. Literally, that's what he writes. He's taking a congressional knee to oppose the lack of gun control in the wake of this tragedy. You can't even stand up and respect the freaking dead? 59 dead? Over 500 injured? You sit, you stand in a moment of silence to show respect for the victims and their families. You can't even put one minute and stand up and put aside your partisan politics. And the globe is lionizing this guy. He took a knee. He really showed those Republicans. You've got late night comedians. I'm going to play it coming up next. Jimmy Kimmel and others who are now blaming the Republicans and conservatives for what happened in Las Vegas. 617-266-6868. Don't touch that dial. Democrats, news anchors, the mainstream media pouncing on gun control in the wake of the deadliest mass shooting 
in American history. They couldn't even wait for the bodies to be cold. They couldn't even wait to mourn the dead. And already they were playing politics and trying to politicize and leverage the tragedy that took place uh, Sunday into Monday morning. And so, again, they go for the guns. They don't know why. They don't know what drove him to do it. They don't know the motives. They don't know how he got his guns, how he got his ammo. It doesn't matter. The facts don't matter. Just go for the guns. 617-266-6868. Let's go to, who do you want me to go to, Brittany? Let's go to Larry in Belmont. You're up next. Go ahead, Larry. Hey, Jeff, real quick. Um, I have a background in the military. I was worked for a police department, and I also had a friend who was a sniper instructor who took me out and let me shoot his sniper rifles. Scopes aren't just keyed in to anybody. They're keyed into you, your body, your arm length. See, he, he didn't just grab a gun with a scope and already have it set up for accuracy. The, using an automatic weapon, I'm 6'5", 200 pounds, very muscular, It's hard to keep a train on that, even with a little bipod. It's not easy. It takes months of meticulous planning to pull something like this off and training. It doesn't add up. Uh, Larry, if you don't mind me asking, fascinating call. Larry, if you don't mind me asking, what do you think? What do you think is going on here? There is there's more to it. There, this is a group planning. Is this? I hate the term lone wolf because even when they label people lone wolf, you look far far enough back. He had help. Right? You don't collect this kind of arsenal. After the um, FBI or the uh, Oklahoma City bombing, they put tags on ammonium nitrate sales. Where did he get all that? Was it, and how do you keep slipping under the radar getting all this stuff? It doesn't happen. Those were put in place in 1995 after, um, what's his name, blew up the federal building. Yeah, that was Timothy McVeigh in Oklahoma. Yeah, thank you, Timothy McVeigh. Uh, Larry, they put, they put, as somebody, yeah, uh, sorry, because I'm up against it. I just want to really pin right. you down on this because this is this is absolutely fascinating. As somebody who took you know sniper training, knows about you know how to pull off something like this, does it sound no- possible to you that a 64 year old, out of shape, retired guy, with no history of gun use, no military training whatsoever, could lodge those two sniper nests? and commit the atrocity that he did? No way. There is no way. There's no way. Like I said, even with my background, that would have been a stunt and a half for me to pull off. And you're what? You're 6'5", so you're 200 pounds? Yeah. We've uh, met before, and I, you know, I'm about your height. We're, we're, Larry, when did we meet? Uh, we met, uh, let's see, we met with um, Chris Peronto, and then I was one of your guests at election night. Ah, uh, uh, Larry, I think yeah, I... Re- exactly. Larry, you're yeah, a big guy. Veteran. Yeah. Oh, Larry, right. listen, uh, six five. you're more like two... I mean, you're, you look 225, 230. You're a big guy, Larry. Right. So if a muscle guy like you would have a hard time pulling it off, there's no way this guy did it. Larry, phenomenal call. Don't be a stranger. 617-266-6868. More next. The voice of Boston is... You... 680 WRKO Boston, 937 WEEI HD2 Lawrence Boston. It's 2 o'clock.